Welcome to another review of Alpha Audio. Today on our improvised speaker stand, we have the Wharfdale Linton Heritage. Check it out. Take a look at the Wharfdale Linton Heritage. It might seem that it's a very old speaker, and yes, the first version was pretty old. But this newer one has improved units, has improved filter components, everything is up to date and uh, according to today's standards. So the performance of this loudspeaker is pretty good, but we'll go into that later on in this review. First, we're going to take a look at the specifications. Obviously, it's a three-way speaker, so it has a one-inch soft dome tweeter and it has a, a Kevlar woven mid-range and a Kevlar woven woofer. At the back, we see two bass, bass reflex ports. Um, well, that's about it. You can't buy amp or buy wire this loudspeaker, but honestly, the tar target audience of the Wharfdale Linton Heritage is not into bi-amping or bi-wiring loudspeakers. The fit and finish of the loudspeaker is pretty good for 1300 euros. Uh, it, it looks great, it looks old-fashioned, but that's the whole point of this loudspeaker. Warfdale wants to appeal to an audience that is into retro stuff, so this loudspeaker fits perfectly in that interior. If we take a look at the competition, like the KEF LS50 uh, Monitor Audio Silver, nah, gold is a little bit too expensive, uh, Bowers & Wilkins 700 series, it comes along fine. It, it has a deep bass uh, up to 35 hertz uh, according to the specifications, but that's the minus 6 dB point, so yeah, it lacks a little bit of power, but 40 hertz is, is no problem at all. And when we when we were listening to the loudspeakers, it goes deep and it has a lot of punch in the in the low end. The mid range is very open, but it is a little bit pronounced if we say it carefully. Uh, so vocals are very clear and very detailed. But take care in matching with an amplifier. We used the Audio Lab six uh, thousand A, and it goes. Perfectly, it, it's it's flawless. It, it's a match made in heaven, <laughs> so to say. But the upper end, uh, the treble, is a little bit grainy. Um, for 1300 euros, it's still very good, but a Kef LS50 is better in that perspective. The Kef LS50 is also better in stereo imaging. Uh, it's a strong point of the LS50, of course, but if you take a look at Monitor Audio or uh, Bowers & Wilkins or maybe DIN Audio, they're also better in stereo imaging. This is not a very good speaker in terms of focus. Uh, the, the stereo imaging is a little bit blurry. Um, you can use toe-in to make it better, but then the stereo image gets very small. Um, mm, is it a bad speaker because of that? No, absolutely not, because it is a fun speaker to listen to. It has high energy, it's very involving, it's remarkably de detailed. Uh, I wasn't expecting that to be honest, And but the low frequencies are not really detailed. But for 1300 euros, it's perfectly fine. And yeah, well, it, it looks different than the rest. That That's a good point, I think. I mean, it will absolutely appeal to a certain audience. And I think technically, it's absolutely a fine speaker. We hope you liked this review. If you liked it, thumbs up, um, care to share, and hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye.